Kamikaze Divine Wind or Spirit Wind, officially Takubatsu Kagakitai. Special Attack Unit, were a part of the Japanese special attack units of military aviators who initiated suicide attacks for the Empire of Japan against Allied naval vessels in the closing stages of the Pacific Campaign of World War II, designed to destroy warships more effectively than was possible with conventional air attacks. About 3,862 kamikaze pilots died during the war, and more than 7,000 naval personnel were killed by kamikaze attacks. Kamikaze aircraft were essentially pilot-guided explosive missiles, purpose-built or converted from conventional aircraft. Pilots would attempt to crash their aircraft into enemy ships in what was called a body attack in planes laden with some combination of explosives, bombs, torpedoes, and full-fuel tanks. Accuracy was much better than a conventional attack, and the payload and explosion larger, about 19% of kamikaze attacks were successful. A kamikaze could sustain damage which would disable a conventional attacker and still achieve its objective. The goal of crippling or destroying large numbers of allied ships, particularly aircraft carriers, was considered by the Empire of Japan to be a just reason for sacrificing pilots and aircraft. These attacks, which began in October 1944, followed several critical military defeats for the Japanese. They had long since lost aerial dominance due to outdated aircraft and the loss of experienced pilots. Japan suffered from a diminishing capacity for war, and a rapidly declining industrial capacity relative to the Allies. Japan was also losing pilots faster than it could train their replacements. In combination, these factors, coupled with the unwillingness to surrender, led to the use of kamikaze tactics as Allied forces advanced towards the Japanese home islands. While the term kamikaze usually refers to the aerial strikes, it has also been applied to various other suicide attacks. The Japanese military also used or made plans for non-aerial Japanese special attack units, including those involving submarines, human torpedoes, speedboats, and divers. The tradition of death instead of defeat, capture, and shame was deeply entrenched in Japanese military culture. It was one of the primary traditions in the samurai life and the Bushido code, loyalty and honor until death. Definition and Etymology The Japanese word kamikaze is usually translated as divine wind, kami is the word for god, spirit, or divinity, and kaze for wind. The word originated from Makarakataba of Waka poetry modifying ISE and has been used since August 1281 to refer to the major typhoons which dispersed Mongolian invasion fleets under Kublai Khan in 1274. A Japanese monoplane which made a record-breaking flight from Tokyo to London in 1937 for the Asahi newspaper group was named Kamikaze. She was a prototype for the Mitsubishi Ki-15, Bob's. In Japanese, the formal term used for units carrying out suicide attacks during 1944-1945 is Takubutsu Kagakitai, which literally means special attack unit. This is usually abbreviated to Taktai. More specifically, air suicide attack units from the Imperial Japanese Navy were officially called Shin Takubutsu Kagakitai, Divine Wind Special Attack Units. Shin is the on-reading, onyomi or Chinese-derived pronunciation of the same characters that form the word kamikaze in Japanese. During World War II, the pronunciation kamikaze was used only informally in the Japanese press in relation to suicide attacks, but after the war this usage gained acceptance worldwide and was re-imported into Japan. As a result, the special attack units are sometimes known in Japan as kamikaze takubutsu kegakitai. History Background before the formation of kamikaze units, pilots had made deliberate crashes as a last resort when their planes had suffered severe damage and they did not want to risk being captured, or wanted to do as much damage to the enemy as possible, since they were crashing anyway, such situations occurred in both the Axis and Allied Air Forces. Axel and Kay see these suicides as individual, impromptu decisions by men who were mentally prepared to die. In most cases, Little evidence exists that such hits represented more than accidental collisions of the kind that sometimes happen in intense sea or air battles. One example of this occurred on December 7, 1941 during the attack on Pearl Harbor. 
First Lieutenant Fusita Ida's plane had taken a hit and had started leaking fuel when he apparently used it to make a suicide attack on Naval Air Station Kaneohe. Before taking off, he had told his men that if his plane were to become badly damaged he would crash it into a worthy enemy target. The carrier battles in 1942, particularly Midway, inflicted irreparable damage on the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service, Ijinas, such that they could no longer put together a large number of fleet carriers with well-trained air crews. Japanese planners had assumed a quick war and lacked comprehensive programs to replace the losses of ships, pilots, and sailors, at Midway in June 1942, the Japanese lost as many air crewmen in a single day as their pre-war training program had caused in a year. The following Solomon Islands Campaign, 1942-1945, and the New Guinea Campaign, 1942-1945, notably the Battles of Eastern Solomons, August 1942, and Santa Cruz, October 1942 further decimated the Igenis veteran air crews, and replacing their combat experience proved impossible. During 1943-1944, U.S. forces steadily advanced toward Japan. Newer U.S. made planes, especially the Grumman F-6F Hellcat and Vought F-4U Corsair, outclassed and soon outnumbered Japan's fighter planes. Tropical diseases, as well as shortages of spare parts and fuel, made operations more and more difficult for the Igenis. By the Battle of the Philippine Sea, June 1944, the Japanese had to make do with obsolete aircraft and inexperienced aviators in the fight against better trained and more experienced U.S. Navy airmen who flew radar-directed combat air patrols. The Japanese lost over 400 carrier-based planes and pilots in the Battle of the Philippine Sea, effectively putting an end to their carrier's potency. Allied aviators called the action the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot. On June 19, 1944, planes from the carrier Chiyoda approached a U.S. task group. According to some accounts, two made suicide attacks, one of which hit USS Indiana. The important Japanese base of Saipan fell to the Allied forces on July 15, 1944. Its capture provided adequate forward bases which enabled U.S. air forces using the Boeing B-29 Superfortress to strike at the Japanese home islands. After the fall of Saipan, the Japanese high command predicted that the Allies would try to capture the Philippines, strategically important to Tokyo because of their location between the oil fields of Southeast Asia and Japan. Beginnings Captain Motoharu Okamura, in charge of the Tate Yama base in Tokyo, as well as the 341st Air Group Home, was, according to some sources, the first officer to officially propose kamikaze attack tactics. He arranged, with his superiors, the first investigations on the plausibility and mechanisms of intentional suicide attacks on June 15, 1944. In August 1944, it was announced by the Domain News Agency that a flight instructor named Takeo Tegata was training pilots in Taiwan for suicide missions. One source claims that the first kamikaze mission occurred on September 13, 1944. A group of pilots from the Army's 31st Fighter Squadron on Negros Island decided to launch a suicide attack the following morning. First Lieutenant Takeshi Kosei and a sergeant were selected. Two 100 kilograms. 220 pounds, bombs were attached to two fighters, and the pilots took off before dawn, planning to crash into carriers. They never returned, but there is no record of an enemy plane hitting an Allied ship that day. According to some sources, on October 14, 1944, USS Reno was hit by a deliberately crashed Japanese plane. Rear Admiral Masafumi Arima, the commander of the 26th Air Flotilla, part of the 11th Air Fleet, is sometimes credited with inventing the kamikaze tactic. Arima personally led an attack by about 100 Yokosuka D-4 Waisuase, Judy, dive bombers against a large Essex-class aircraft carrier, USS Franklin, near Leyte Gulf, on, or about, accounts vary, October 15, 1944. Arima was killed and part of a plane hit Franklin. The Japanese high command and propagandists seized on Arima's example, 
he was promoted posthumously to Vice Admiral and was given official credit for making the first kamikaze attack. It is not clear that this was a planned suicide attack, and official Japanese accounts of Arima's attack bore little resemblance to the actual events. On October 17, 1944, Allied forces assaulted Solyuan Island, beginning the Battle of Leyte Gulf. The Imperial Japanese Navy's first air fleet, based at Manila, was assigned the task of assisting the Japanese ships which would attempt to destroy Allied forces in Leyte Gulf. That unit had only 40 aircraft, 34 Mitsubishi A6M0 carrier-based fighters, 3 Nakajima B6 and Tenzin, Jill, torpedo bombers, 1 Mitsubishi G4M, Betty, and 2 Yokosuka P1Y Jinga, Francis, land-based bombers, and 1 additional reconnaissance aircraft. The task facing the Japanese air forces seemed impossible. The first air fleet commandant, Vice Admiral Takaijir Nishi, decided to form a suicide offensive force, the Special Attack Unit. In a meeting at Mabalakat Airfield, known to the U.S. military as Clark Air Base, near Manila, on October 19, Onishi told officers of the 201st Flying Group Headquarters, I don't think there would be any other certain way to carry out the operation, than to put a 250 kg bomb on a zero and let it crash into a U.S. carrier, in order to disable her for a week. First Unit Commander Asayaki Tamai asked a group of 23 talented student pilots, all of whom he had trained, to volunteer for the Special Attack Force. All of the pilots raised both of their hands, volunteering to join the operation. Later. Tamai asked Lt. Yukio Seiki to command the Special Attack Force. Seiki is said to have closed his eyes, lowered his head and thought for 10 seconds, before saying, please do appoint me to the post. Seiki became the 24th kamikaze pilot to be chosen. Seiki later said, Japan's future is bleak if it is forced to kill one of its best pilots and I am not going on this mission for the Emperor or for the Empire. I am going because I was ordered to. The names of four subunits within the Kamikaze Special Attack Force were Unit Shikishima, Unit Yamato, Unit Asahi, and Unit Yamazakura. These names were taken from a patriotic death poem, Shikishima no Yamato Gokoro Wohito Toaba, Asahi ni no Yamazakura Bana by the Japanese classical scholar, Motori Norinaga. The poem reads, If someone asks about the Yamato spirit of Shikishima it is the flowers of Yamazakura that are fragrant in the Asahi. A less literal translation is, Asked about the soul of Japan. I would say, That it is. Like wild cherry blossoms. Glowing in the morning sun. Nishi, addressing this unit, told them that their nobility of spirit would keep the homeland from ruin even in defeat. Leyte Gulf the first attacks. Several suicide attacks, carried out during the invasion of Leyte, by Japanese pilots from units other than the Special Attack Force, have been described as the first kamikaze attack. Early on October 21, a Japanese aircraft, possibly a Navy Aichi D-3A dive bomber or an Army Mitsubishi Ki-51, of the 6th Flying Brigade, Imperial Japanese Army Air Force, deliberately crashed into the foremast of the heavy cruiser HMAS Australia. The attack killed 30 personnel, including the cruiser's captain, Emil de Chenyux, and wounded 64, including the Australian force commander, Commodore John Collins. The Australian official history of the war claimed that this was the first kamikaze attack on an Allied ship, although other sources disagree because it was not a planned attack by a member of the Special Attack Force but was most likely to have been undertaken on the pilot's own initiative. The sinking of the ocean tug USS Sonoma on October 24 is listed in some sources as the first ship lost to a kamikaze strike, but the attack occurred before October 25, and the aircraft used, a Mitsubishi G4M, was not flown by the original four special attack squadrons. On October 25, 1944, during the Battle of Leyte Gulf, the Kamikaze Special Attack Force carried out its first mission. Five A6M Zeros, led by Seiki, and escorted to the target by leading Japanese ace Hiroyoshi Nishizawa, attacked several escort carriers. 
One Zero attempted to hit the bridge of USS Keatkin Bay but instead exploded on the port catwalk and cartwheeled into the sea. Two others dived at USS Fanshawe Bay but were destroyed by anti-aircraft fire. The last two ran at USS White Plains. One, under heavy fire and trailing smoke, aborted the attempt on White Plains and instead banked toward USS St. Lowe, plowing into the flight deck. Its bomb caused fires that resulted in the bomb magazine exploding, sinking the carrier. By day's end on October 26, 55 kamikazes from the Special Attack Force had also damaged the large escort carrier's USS Sangaman, Sawani which had also been struck by a kamikaze at 8.04 forward of its aft elevator on October 25, Santee and the smaller escorts USS White Plains, Kalinan Bay, and Keatkin Bay. In total, seven carriers were hit, as well as 40 other ships, five sunk, 23 heavily damaged, and 12 moderately damaged. Main Wave of Attacks Early successes such as the sinking of St. Lo were followed by an immediate expansion of the program, and over the next few months over 2,000 planes made such attacks. When Japan began to be subject to intense strategic bombing by Boeing B-29 superfortresses, the Japanese military attempted to use suicide attacks against this threat. During the Northern Hemisphere winter of 1944-45, the AJAF formed the 47th Air Regiment, also known as the Shinton Special Unit, Shinton Sikutai, at Narimasu Airfield, Narima, Tokyo, to defend the Tokyo metropolitan area. The unit was equipped with Nakajima Ki-44 Shoki, Tocho, fighters, with which they were to ram United States Army Air Forces, USAF, B-29S in their attacks on Japan. This proved much less successful and practical since an airplane is a much faster, more maneuverable, and smaller target than a warship. The B-29 also had formidable defensive weaponry, so suicide attacks against the plane demanded considerable piloting skill to be successful, which worked against the very purpose of using expendable pilots. Even encouraging capable pilots to bail out before impact was ineffective because vital personnel were often lost when they mistimed their exits and were killed as a result. On March 11, the U.S. carrier USS Randolph was hit and moderately damaged at Ulithi Atoll, in the Caroline Islands, by a kamikaze that had flown almost 4,000 kilometers, 2,500 miles, from Japan, in a mission called Operation Tan No. 2. On March 20, the submarine USS Deadvilfish survived a hit from an aircraft, just off Japan. Purpose-built kamikaze planes, as opposed to converted fighters and dive bombers, were also being constructed. Ensign Mitsuo Oda had suggested that piloted glider bombs, carried within range of targets by a mother plane, should be developed. The first Naval Air Technical Bureau, Kujisho, in Yokosuka, refined Oda's idea. Yokosuka MXY 70A rocket planes, launched from bombers, were first deployed in kamikaze attacks from March 1945. U.S. personnel gave them the derisive nickname Baka Bombs, Baka is Japanese for idiot or stupid. The Nakajima Ki 115 Tsuruji was a simple, easily built propeller aircraft with a wooden airframe which used engines from existing stocks. Its non-retractable landing gear was jettisoned shortly after takeoff for a suicide mission, and reused. During 1945, the Japanese military began stockpiling hundreds of Tsuruji, other aircraft, OAs, and suicide boats, for use against Allied forces expected to invade Japan. The invasion never happened, and few were ever used. Allied Defensive Tactics in early 1945 U.S. Navy aviator Commander John Thatch, already famous for developing effective aerial tactics against the Japanese such as the Thatch Weave, developed a defensive strategy against kamikazes called the Big Blue Blanket to establish Allied air supremacy well away from the carrier force. This recommended combat air patrols, CAP, which were larger and operated further from the carriers than before a line of picket destroyers and destroyer escorts at least 80 kilometers, 50 miles, from the main body of the fleet to provide earlier radar interception, and improved coordination between fighter direction officers on carriers. This plan also called for around-the-clock fighter patrols over Allied fleets, 
though the U.S. Navy had cut back training of fighter pilots so there were not enough Navy pilots available to counter the kamikaze threat. A final element included intensive fighter sweeps over Japanese airfields, and bombing of Japanese runways, using delayed action bombs to make repairs more difficult. Late in 1944 the British Pacific Fleet, BPF, used the good high-altitude performance of their Supermarine Sea Fires, naval version of the Spitfire, on combat air patrol duties. Sea Fires were heavily involved in countering the kamikaze attacks during the Iwo Jima landings and beyond. The Sea Fires' best day was August 15, 1945, shooting down eight attacking aircraft for a single loss. Allied pilots were experienced and better trained, and flew superior aircraft, making the poorly trained kamikaze pilots easy targets. The U.S. Fast Carrier Task Force alone could bring over 1,000 fighter aircraft into play. Allied pilots became adept at destroying enemy aircraft before they struck ships. Allied gunners had begun to develop techniques to negate kamikaze attacks. Light rapid-fire anti-aircraft weapons such as the 40mm Bofors and 20mm Erlikon autocannons were highly effective, but heavy anti-aircraft guns such as the 5-38 caliber gun, 127mm, had the punch to blow kamikazes out of the air, which was preferable since even a heavily damaged kamikaze could complete its mission. The OAs with their high speed presented a very difficult problem for anti-aircraft fire, since their velocity made fire control extremely difficult. By 1945, large numbers of anti-aircraft shells with radio frequency proximity fuses, on average seven times more effective than regular shells, became available, and the USN recommended their use against kamikaze attacks. Final Phase the peak in kamikaze attacks came during the period of April-June 1945, at the Battle of Okinawa. On April 6, 1945, waves of aircraft made hundreds of attacks in Operation Kikusui, floating chrysanthemums. At Okinawa, kamikaze attacks focused at first on Allied destroyers on picket duty, and then on the carriers in the middle of the fleet. Suicide attacks by planes or boats at Okinawa sank or put out of action at least 30 U.S. warships, and at least three U.S. merchant ships, along with some from other Allied forces. The attacks expended 1,465 planes. Many warships of all classes were damaged, some severely, but no aircraft carriers, battleships, or cruisers were sunk by kamikaze at Okinawa. Most of the ships lost were destroyers or smaller vessels, especially those on picket duty. The destroyer USS Laffey earned the nickname the ship that would not die after surviving six kamikaze attacks and four bomb hits during this battle. So many destroyers were attacked that one ship's crew, considering the aircraft carriers to be more important targets, erected a large sign with an arrow which read that way to the carriers. US carriers, with their wooden flight decks, appeared to suffer more damage from kamikaze hits than the armored-decked carriers from the British Pacific Fleet. U.S. carriers also suffered considerably heavier casualties from kamikaze strikes, for instance, 389 men were killed in one attack on USS Bunker Hill, greater than the combined number of fatalities suffered on all six Royal Navy armored carriers from all forms of attack during the entire war. Bunker Hill and Franklin were both hit while conducting operations with fully fueled and armed aircraft spotted on deck for takeoff, an extremely vulnerable state for any carrier. Eight kamikaze hits on five British carriers resulted in only 20 deaths while a combined total of 15 bomb hits, most of 500 kg weight or greater, and one torpedo hit on four carriers caused 193 fatal casualties earlier in the war striking proof of the protective value of the armored flight deck. The resilience of well-armored vessels was shown on May 4, just after 11.30, when there was a wave of suicide attacks against the British Pacific Fleet. One Japanese plane made a steep dive from a great height at the carrier HMS Formidable and was engaged by AA guns. Although it was hit by gunfire, a bomb from the kamikaze detonated on the flight deck, making a crater 3M, 9.8 feet, long, 0.6M, 2 feet wide and 0.6 m, 2 feet, deep. A long steel splinter speared down, through the hangar deck and the main boiler room, where it ruptured a steam line, 
before coming to rest in a fuel tank near the aircraft park, where it started a major fire. Eight personnel were killed and 47 were wounded. One Corsair and ten Grumman Avengers were destroyed. The fires were gradually brought under control, and the crater in the deck was repaired with concrete and steel plate. By 1700 hours, Corsairs were able to land. On May 9, Formidable was again damaged by a kamikaze, as were the carrier HMS Victorious and the battleship HMS Howe. The British were able to clear the flight deck and resume flight operations in just hours, while their American counterparts took a few days or even months, as observed by a USN liaison officer on HMS Indefatigable who commented, when a kamikaze hits a US carrier it means six months of repair at Pearl. When a kamikaze hits a limey carrier it's just a case of sweepers, man your brooms. Sometimes twin-engined aircraft were used in planned kamikaze attacks. For example, Mitsubishi Ki-67 Hiri, Peggy, medium bombers, based on Formosa, undertook kamikaze attacks on Allied forces off Okinawa and a pair of Kawasaki Ki-45 Toru, Nick, heavy fighters caused enough damage for the USS Dickerson, DD-157, to be scuttled. Vice Admiral Madom Ogaki, the commander of the IJN 5th Air Fleet based in Kyushu, participated in one of the final kamikaze attacks on American ships on August 15, 1945, hours after Japan's announced surrender. Effects As the end of the war approached, the Allies did not suffer more serious significant losses, despite having far more ships and facing a greater intensity of kamikaze attacks. Although causing some of the heaviest casualties on U.S. carriers in 1945, the IJN had sacrificed 2,525 kamikaze pilots and the AJAF 1,387 far more than they had lost in 1942 when they sank or crippled three carriers, albeit without inflicting significant casualties. In 1942 when U.S. Navy vessels were scarce, the temporary absence of key warships from the combat zone would tie up operational initiatives. By 1945, However the U.S. Navy was large enough that damaged ships could be detached back home for repair without significantly hampering the fleet's operational capability. The only surface losses were destroyers and smaller ships that lacked the capability to sustain heavy damage. Overall, the kamikazes were unable to turn the tide of the war and stop the Allied invasion. In the immediate aftermath of kamikaze strikes, British carriers with their armored flight decks recovered more quickly compared to their U.S. counterparts. Post-war analysis showed that some British carriers such as HMS Formidable suffered structural damage that led to them being scrapped, as being beyond economic repair. Britain's post-war economic situation played a role in the decision to not repair damaged carriers, while even seriously damaged American carriers such as USS Bunker Hill were repaired although they were then mothballed or sold off as surplus after World War II without re-entering service. The exact number of ships sunk is a matter of debate. According to a wartime Japanese propaganda announcement, the mission sank 81 ships and damaged 195, and according to a Japanese tally, kamikaze attacks accounted for up to 80% of the U.S. losses in the final phase of the war in the Pacific. In a 2004 book, World War II, the historians Wilmot, Cross and Messenger stated that more than 70 U.S. vessels were sunk or damaged beyond repair by kamikazes. According to a U.S. Air Force web page, approximately 2,800 kamikaze attackers sank 34 Navy ships, damaged 368 others, killed 4,900 sailors, and wounded over 4,800. Despite radar detection and queuing, airborne interception, attrition, and massive anti-aircraft barrages, 14% of kamikazes survived to score a hit on a ship, nearly 8.5% of all ships hit by kamikazes sank. Australian journalists Dennis and Peggy Warner, in a 1982 book with Japanese naval historian Sadao Sino, The Sacred Warriors, Japan's Suicide Legions, arrived at a total of 57 ships sunk by kamikazes. Bill Gordon, an American Japanologist who specializes in kamikazes, lists in a 2007 article 47 ships known to have been sunk by kamikaze aircraft. 
Gordon says that the Warners and Sino included ten ships that did not sink. He lists three escort carriers, USS St. Lo, USS Amani Bay, and USS Bismarck Sea. Fourteen destroyers, including the last ship to be sunk, USS Callahan, DD-792, on July 29, 1945, off Okinawa. Three high-speed transport ships. Five landing ship, tank. Four landing ship medium. Three landing ship medium, rocket. One auxiliary tanker. Three Canadian victory ships. Three liberty ships. Two high-speed minesweepers. One op-class minesweeper. One submarine chaser. Two PT boats. Two landing craft support. Recruitment. It was claimed by the Japanese forces at the time that there were many volunteers for the suicidal forces. Captain Motoharu Okamura commented that there were so many volunteers for suicide missions that he referred to them as a swarm of bees, explaining, bees die after they have stung. Okamura is credited with being the first to propose the kamikaze attacks. He had expressed his desire to lead a volunteer group of suicide attacks some four months before Admiral Takijiro Onishi, commander of the Japanese Naval Air Forces in the Philippines, presented the idea to his staff. While Vice Admiral Shigeru Fukudome, commander of the 2nd Air Fleet, was inspecting the 341st Air Group, Captain Okamura took the chance to express his ideas on crash dive tactics. In our present situation I firmly believe that the only way to swing the war in our favor is to resort to crash dive attacks with our planes. There is no other way. There will be more than enough volunteers for this chance to save our country, and I would like to command such an operation. Provide me with 300 planes and I will turn the tide of war. When the volunteers arrived for duty in the Corps, there were twice as many persons as aircraft available. After the war, some commanders would express regret for allowing superfluous crews to accompany sorties, sometimes squeezing themselves aboard bombers and fighters so as to encourage the suicide pilots and, it seems, join in the exultation of sinking a large enemy vessel. Many of the kamikaze pilots believed their death would pay the debt they owed and show the love they had for their families, friends, and emperor. So eager were many minimally trained pilots to take part in suicide missions that when their sorties were delayed or aborted, the pilots became deeply despondent. Many of those who were selected for a body crashing mission were described as being extraordinarily blissful immediately before their final sortie. As time wore on, modern critics questioned the nationalist portrayal of kamikaze pilots as noble soldiers willing to sacrifice their lives for the country. In 2006, Sunio Watanabe, editor-in-chief of the Yomiri Shimbun, criticized Japanese nationalists' glorification of kamikaze attacks. It's all a lie that they left filled with braveness and joy, crying, Long live the emperor! They were sheep at a slaughterhouse. Everybody was looking down and tottering. Some were unable to stand up and were carried and pushed into the plane by maintenance soldiers. Training when you eliminate all thoughts about life and death, you will be able to totally disregard your earthly life. This will also enable you to concentrate your attention on eradicating the enemy with unwavering determination, meanwhile reinforcing your excellence in flight skills. Excerpt from a Kamikaze Pilot's Manual Taktai Pilot Training, as described by Takeo Kasuga, generally consisted of incredibly strenuous training, coupled with cruel and torturous corporal punishment as a daily routine. Daikichi Irokawa, who trained at Chuchiura Naval Air Base, recalled that he was struck on the face so hard and frequently that face was no longer recognizable. He also wrote, I was hit so hard that I could no longer see and fell on the floor. The minute I got up, I was hit again by a club so that I would confess. This brutal training was justified by the idea that it would instill a soldier's fighting spirit, but daily beatings and corporal punishment eliminated patriotism among many pilots. Pilots were given a manual which detailed how they were supposed to think, prepare, and attack. From this manual, pilots were told, Please subscribe and thanks for watching.